But, like, food, though. I know. I just, God. I mean, growing up, we would have just an ensemble. Oh, it's decked out. Can we talk about how good tabbouleh and hummus is? Tabbouleh, hummus, and then on our side, we would have chicken tikka, uh, you know, alu sag. And pita? Uh, non. Non. Oh, yeah, but I'm pita. Yeah, pita, non. Pita, come home. No, <laughs> but okay. You're listening to Enhance, the podcast dedicated to highlighting real stories told by real people. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Enhance Podcast. My name is Gabby Sabat, and as always, I'm the co-host of Enhance Podcast, but I do have Tyler Shaw here with me, and we are going to talk about a couple different things today. Tyler, say hello. Hello. Awesome. Um, And just to kind of get started... Um, we do have a little icebreaker. I know it's your favorite. Where do you find peace? Why are you laughing? <laughs> I I don't often find peace. <laughs> oh, okay. Talk about it. Why? My mind's always going. My mind is always going. And I have that preconceived notion that peace is where there is no noise. There's no thinking. There's nothing going on but where i feel most comfortable and at peace honestly okay. is at work oh okay cool where i can have my time to sit and direct my busy mind on one thing Predictive. that is where i find the most <laughs> peace I, I wish i could say it is when i draw a bath and put a nice bath bomb in and have some good music playing and a glass of wine, but it's not. <laughs> that is self-care. I love it. I do it. But that is not where I find peace. That's where I am able to rebuild, where I can just have some time to regenerate my my energy. See, that's cool. I find peace when I'm able to fully, in that moment, be the happiest I can be. Okay. So, like, think about it. Like, if I'm really happy at work, I'm having a good day at work, that's really peaceful to me because I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Um, I find a lot of relaxation within that. Okay? Let's say, you know, I'm at home and I'm, you know, by myself, like, just, like, hanging out, listening to music, whatever. That's peaceful. Now, if I'm having an awful day and everyone's yelling at me or my friends don't like me or whatever it is, I do not find peace. (laughs) <laughs> which tends to happen to me. I don't understand. But I feel like peace can be found on my way home from work. Yeah. You know, that 20-minute drive, that 15-minute drive. Just this very two seconds to myself, but I'm still enjoying my day. I'm listening to music and yelling at grounded. people. Yeah. Yeah. Yelling at people at Grounded traffic. with road rage. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Honestly, if I can yell at someone, it's fun. Yeah. At least on the road, not anywhere else. I get it. I'm not a yeller. I get it. I'm loud. But, but not, not a yeller. yeller. Yeah. There's a difference. So actually with that, because <laughs> this is where this comes in. Um, so we're talking a lot about, you know, trying to conform in society a little bit, but also thrive and survive with our cultures. So um, for those who, of you that do not know or have not listened to the couple episodes Um, where I do talk about myself, which is such a rarity. Um, I'm a, you know, Lebanese and Israeli mixed first generation American. And Tyler, what are you? I am also first generation American. (gasps) My father immigrated to the U.S. My mother is a fantastic, I love her so much. She is from the Illinois side. Oh. America. I know some people would <laughs> knock a few points off. I think she is just the belle of the ball. I love her. Love her so much. Obsessed with her. Um, no, so I am a first generation American. Both my sister and I are um, born and raised here. Um, but I am Pakistani, Italian, and, you know, a good mix of Eastern Europe. Sure. So yeah. we get we get that. Um, we love it. Gotta yeah. be mixed. <laughs> but, Mix the cultures. <laughs> <laughs> but growing up, it was very heavy focus on the Pakistani, Italian, 
side of our family. And I mean, that's how we got here. Yeah, yeah. No, if I mean, my, that's how we got here too. Yeah. It's a, the Arab side. Yeah. <laughs> so if, you know, if my dad never left London, Tyler yeah. wouldn't be here. Oh my gosh. I always forget that he's from London. It's yeah. Like, wow. Shout out to him. Love you. <laughs> I, I do. I love him very much. I love my parents too. Yeah. I love your parents. I know. Everyone loves my Your parents, parents are hilarious. So, you know, I think like with, uh, you know, kind of like in a sense of like trying to conform. I remember when I was, and it's not even like trying to conform in the sense of a negative way. It's just like wanting to fit in really as yeah. a little kid. Yeah. You know, I was at this, you know, it was a grade school, middle school big school, you know, or all the grades were in there, you know? Yeah. And I just remember wanting to fit in so bad, but because I was, you know, tan and I had dark eyes, I had dark curly hair, you know, I didn't fit into like the norm. I didn't fit into the, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes with your hair in a ponytail on the left side with the pink bow. (laughs) And, you know, I, I just didn't, I didn't fit in. I didn't, I wanted to so bad. I wanted to have friends and I wanted to do all that, but I also wanted to be myself. And I think I didn't understand You wanted to be yourself as a kid? I didn't understand it until I was older that that's what was happening. Interesting. Yeah. So like I was a very independent kid and actually I was very, I was a very quiet kid, which now if you've known me, I don't stop Complete opposite. Yeah, Yeah. I'm the most extrovert person I know because of my father. It's all his fault. But <laughs> thank you to this man. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. We love you. Oh. Um, anyway, but like, you know, I used to be like, I just want to fit in. I want to be friends with people, but I'm not going to change myself. I did wow. not. I was so stubborn about it because I was like, what's so special about being the same? We had two very different childhoods. Well, what about yours? Tell me about yours. Well, I was... I grew up on the Illinois side. Like I said in the previous episode, I I grew up on the Illinois side of St. Louis in the Mm -hmm. metro. And um, school was over there, but I spent a lot of time in South St. Louis. So I got got good experience with people of different backgrounds. Um, But, you know, being in Collinsville, it was the same kind of person, and that was a straight, white, not really foreign culture. Right. But here we were coming from a mixed home. (laughs) My sister and I coming from a mixed (laughs) home. Me, the little gay kid. Um, And it was hard. It was hard. hard. I mean, we would be... I don't know about my sister, and honestly, I don't ever want to know because... She is my life. Oh. And Love you. knowing knowing that anyone would say anything mean to her just makes me want to sob. Um, but for me, it was if I wasn't getting bullied for being gay, which I didn't even know or sure, accept until right. I was in high school. Um, it was because, you know, we had different foods that we would bring to school. Oh, don't we get would, me started. I mean, when you're a kid and you're going to school, you're not aware of, you know, what some may consider gauche or may consider, you know. Yeah. You you just don't really bring it up. What's common, what's not. Yeah, Yeah. but we would come to school and, you know, we would talk about our aunts and our uncles and our cousins. And they would have names that nobody had ever heard of because they weren't named. James (laughs) James <laughs> you're right or Stephen right or yeah. Patricia I remember kids looking at me like who and I would be like oh aunt blah, blah, blah. you know like I just say something uh and then I'd be like oh well the American version of that is yeah. the English version of that is yeah because like people don't get it yeah that and I mean we have the last names oh we have the yeah. last names that People will, <laughs> people will somehow not be able to pronounce five letters and four letters. Yeah. I, you know, and I actually, now that you bring that up, I literally don't even like, 
I get even more mixed up about how to say my own last name from how many interpretations there are in the American language. Yeah. Like, or the English language. The American style of the English language. Mm -hmm. I have to be correct, you know? Yeah. But anyway, so like, because it could be, people have said Sabbath, like the Sabbath day, and I'm like, okay, well, you're missing like four letters, three letters, something like that. Then you got Sabbath, Sabbat, Sabut, Mm -hmm. Sabby. I'm like, how did you even get that? Yeah. And it's like, wow, how do I even say my own last name? I forgot now. It's directly related to our identity. It is. And, you know, being young kids, where four letters, (laughs) S-H-A-H. And even now. For those that do not know me or see me, I am a very, very, very white passing man. You are. If you see me on the street, you will be like, Oh, <laughs> what? That is a white man. <laughs> you are white. Yeah. And, you know, that has <laughs> greatly added to my privilege. Um, but <laughs> it, it, I mean, it gave a lot of pause in True. school where it was, you know, <laughs> if it wasn't my name or my family background, it was me being a little gay kid. Oh. So it was, you know, somebody always had something to say, but it would come from adults, teachers. Um, you know, if you if you have one class, like third grade, fourth grade, it's just those students with that one teacher, and you can't spell my last name right, after months of being in the class, you're not putting in the effort. Yeah, I agree. Kids are so vulnerable. They need to, I'm not saying they need to be coddled, but you need to give them baseline respect. Sure. If my coworkers do not say or spell my name right, I mean, I've been at this firm for three years now. There's a problem. There's a problem. It is so disrespectful whenever it's something that is so closely tied to someone's identity. It's like messing up people's pronouns. Yeah. After after being told and knowing, you know, having a teacher ask me, okay, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to say Shaw. Are you okay with Shay? I'm like, okay. How is that even the same thing? It is not the same thing, <laughs> first of all. Close? It's not the same thing. But also, you don't know how to spell my last name either because you're spelling it S H A W. And how do you pronounce that? The same, same damn way. way. <laughs> the same way. No, I think what gets me the most, honestly, and, and this is a little turning on this, but I love it when people will be like, oh, you're from the Middle East? So are you Muslim, Jew, Christian, blah, 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 like whatever religion? And I'm like, Okay, if you really look hard at me, I wear a necklace every day that has a cross on it. Mm -hmm. And a Lebanese cedar tree. So, like, can you figure it out for me without me having to be like, oh, okay, so, like, yes, I understand Israel is very associated with, like, Jewish people. Because, you know, everyone understands, like, their history and things like that, which Mm -hmm. there's no problem. But... You do realize that in other countries, there are multiple religions in every country, right? Well, and <laughs> even back from that, people feel entitled to information about other people's identity whenever sure. it is not the air quote norm. Yeah, 100%. It is, you know, <laughs> if anyone asks me, a question that they I do not feel they deserve an answer to, which is very often. If you're asking me, how are you today? You don't want to know the real answer. Yeah. I'm going to give you the, the nice answer, which is just fine. Sure. I'm doing great. Yeah. People feel entitled to information from people because they want to learn. Which but is we are not fair. We are not required to teach also fair i do not need to tell you if somebody i'm a i am a culturally mixed man and people will walk into my home and they will see 
a shitload of books. Oh, yeah. And they will see a copy of the Bible. They will see a copy of the Quran. And they will say, oh, well, what are you? Like, it's none of your damn business. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think in just regards to that in general, I mean, even if we take it back even more than that, it's not just about, it is about categorizing in a sense. Mm-hmm. But like, I can't tell you how many times people are like, oh, so you're Hispanic. And I'm like, well, way to kind of assume. But also like, I know sometimes I give off that vibe, which is fine. But when you boil it down to skin tone, hair color, eye color, yeah, you know, these exa- very basic exactly. things where preconceived notions rule. Yeah. It's just like they look at you and they're going, okay, so you're this, which in a sense, it, and I think it really depends on situation because in psychology, we are taught that we put things in file folders in our brain schemas mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, it has four legs and it has black and white stripes. What is it? A zebra, right? That's the first thing you think about. But with humans, we are so diverse. I think people don't understand that we are so diverse. And then, so they'll go, okay, tan skin, dark eyes, dark features, you're Hispanic. Because in America, predominantly the next race other than, you know, white and black is Hispanic. But then you go, oh, no, 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 I'm actually from the Middle East. And then it's like, okay, let's even digest that even further. And I'm like, okay, can I just say that I'm I'm culturally diverse and then, like, just leave it at that? Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, I do love talking about my culture. I will literally sit for hours and talk about how I'm loud because all Middle Easterners are loud. <laughs> very stereotype. Which is it's very stereotypical. But it's like, but, but it is part of my with identity. With our families. Yeah. That is very true. Like, you can't tell me no. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, and you know, I I used to go to like, um, so we're technically Maronite. So that is just the Lebanese style of ca- being Catholic, Christian, whatever you want to, however you want to see it. It's very similar. Um, so, we would go on these Maronite youth group organization conferences and i'll tell you from around the united states we are a very fun group because we're loud (laughs) we like to listen though we still like to listen and i think it's a lot because it's a it's a lot of cool kids that like are for mostly first generation yeah and you just pick their brains a little bit so interesting yeah so cool because it's like oh my god you're like me but you don't see people like me all the time. Well, and it's something that's not afforded to us regularly sure. is having access to information because, it, you know, <laughs> when something gets on your nerves, you don't want to do that to other people. No, no. If loud chewing gum gets on your nerves, you don't want to be chewing gum in front of someone else loudly because you're like, okay, it's going to piss them off. Yeah, like you get it. Yeah. Growing up, we would... With my parents, we would go to a Catholic church. With my grandfather, we would go to a mosque. Yeah. And we grew up split between both. And that is its own very deeply complex conversation. Um, But we would do both. But we would go to a mosque that was predominantly Bosnian. There's a huge Bosnian population in St. Louis. There is. And it is really just beautiful. Um, But here we are as young kids. And luckily we grew up in an age where the internet was around. And we could just sit on the computer and and figure things out for ourselves. Oh, yeah. Um, Because if, if I'm going to a mosque that is predominantly Bosnian, I need to learn about Bosnian culture. Yeah. The languages that Bosnians will speak. Because you walk into a Bosnian mosque and you will hear Cyrillic languages, so Russian, Ukrainian, Bosnian dialects. Wow. You'll hear Arabic. And then you walk in with us and we're bringing in... <laughs> Urdu, Urdu yeah. and you know it's it's a me- a melting pot of different backgrounds, but you have to do the service of 
not bugging the shit out of everyone by being those kids in school who are asking too many questions and not taking the time to educate themselves. Yeah. So that is what me and my sister did. We would sit down. I more so (laughs) would sit down and I would say, okay, I'm going to learn because I'm not going to go up to this person and say, oh, blah, blah, blah. Like I have 10 questions for you and they're only specific to you. Um, but they're asking very general questions and I'm going to need you to generalize for your entire culture. I was going to say, you're like talking upon your entire life. Like entire, yes. everyone in your, in that just, it's so crazy. Because they're, they're in Islam, they're different. I don't know what exactly they would be called, but different sects. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like Christianity, there's Catholicism, there's Lutheranism, you know, right. there are different sects. Um, and so being able to teach myself, um, first in my grandfather's homeland of Pakistan, the Sunnis, learning about them, learning about the Shias, learning, learning about the conflicts between both of those groups and how that plays into (laughs) geopolitics and all of that, which is my background of political science. Um, but also understanding well, how does that translate to these other countries where I am meeting people from these countries so that I can have an intelligent conversation with them? I'm doing the legwork because I want to have a relationship. Right. And I think there's some people that are like more set in like that way where they're like, you know, I would rather someone do the research. Yeah. And then there's other people that really want to talk about it. And I mean, like I said before, I will literally sit here for hours talking about my culture. I love my culture. There's things I love and there's things I don't love. I can't, you know, you know, dramatic pause. But like, seriously, but in the end of the day, like, I feel like if you do approach someone that is of a different culture, whether it be Middle Eastern, any type of, you know, East Asian, any of that, you know, like European, even anyone, anyone, Hispanic, anything, you have to have some kind of basis, like a base knowledge of, like, what you're walking into. You do. You do. Like, I can't say, like, you know, oh, because I speak Spanish, I know everything about the Hispanic culture. Yeah. Mm, absolutely not. You know I know, like, five words of Spanish, right? Right. <laughs> like, I don't, I can't pick up languages easy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like, you can't also assume that, like, oh, yeah, every Hispanic person ever speaks fluent Spanish. There's a yes. lot of first Americans that... Uh, like first generation Americans that don't know how to speak their language. Mm-hmm. Like uh, one of my baby brother, like God, blo- God love him, but he doesn't know, he can understand Arabic sometimes, mm-hmm. but like can't speak, can't write, can't read. Yeah. I can understand and speak, but I can't read or write. Yeah. So like you got this differentiation of everything. And then you got, then you got the religion part on top of that because in the Middle Eastern world, religion is a huge thing. Very. It's very. like, Yes. Like, literally, if you don't have a religion, like, you might as well not be in the Middle East. Yeah. Because they want to know what you are. Because they want you categorized. Very much so. But then, then you got the great side. Where it's like, okay, we're very out there. We're very talkative. We, we're very hospitable. When you come into our home, we will give you our socks on our feet. Yeah. Before you say, I need socks on my feet. Yeah. But you better take your shoes off when you walk in the door. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> you should. You should. My family has gotten away from that tradition. We did as well. Um, it was very prevalent when we were children and would play outside. Oh, yeah. Now, it's... Eh. it's like, but okay, you're for fine. some people, for oh, my no, no, no. for my extended family... You take your shoes off. You don't take your shoes off and Auntie is throwing something at you. Yeah. And it's usually <laughs> the sandal that she put on instead of the outdoor shoe that yeah. she had on before. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's so fun yeah and before anyone says anything i know that pakistan is not technically the middle east you're close enough. we are south asian but you're close enough. my family is from peshawar Aww. right on shout the out <laughs> afghan border um and a lot of our tradition is influenced by persian culture are you persian are you persian i you know if you ask my grandfather, he will say, we are Arab. Good. And then he'll say, but we come from Persia. But 
in our blood, we are Pakistanis. I'm like, okay, uh, wow. <laughs> okay, so... So do you know where we're from? <laughs> I, I, we are Arab from Persia, but we have Pakistan blo- flowing through our blood. Of course. But he was born before the partition. Mm, okay, that's why. So he is absolutely hilarious. I love him to death. <laughs> he is incredible. But you know what? We have a developing identity. And that's okay. I love that for you. We that's know, actually a great way of putting we it. We know who we are. We know who we are. And we're using terms that other people use to define us. And that's also fine true. if we don't know what exactly it is. We know who we are. We know what our customs are. We know what our traditions are. We know right. who we are. Well, then, if even if you did, like, a DNA test, you're going to see... I did do a DNA test. Yes, yeah, and you're going to see that not only are you this, this, that you're also, like, 30 other things that you had no idea even existed in your yes. bloodline. <laughs> so, like, you know, it's, like, one of those things. It's, like, where do we... And, again, this is kind of going back to what I said earlier. When do we conform and when do we not? Yeah. When do we decide we're individuals and when do we decide we're one? And I think that's something that's really interesting, especially in our cultures, is because <clears throat> our mindset is about, it's about the family. It's, it's... Everything I do is for my family. There's not a lot of individualism in our cultures. There is, but not to the extent where it's like, you forget your family entirely. Like, I, I know for us, I don't know if, I think it is for you as well, but correct me if I'm wrong. Like, divorce is not even a thing. Unless it's, like, bad. You know. <laughs> is it like that for you, though? My parents have been married. They just celebrated last month their 29th wedding anniversary. Oh. But they were both married and divorced before they met each other. Oh, okay, cute. To other people. And they were a later in life couple. Cute. You know, late 20s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, later in life, that's normal. But no, they it was something that was available to them. And you know, we all make our choices and we deal with the choices we make. Is it now is it traditionally that you guys Absolutely not. You don't do it. No, you do? You don't. No. Okay. No. If anyone had an inkling of wanting a divorce, oh my gosh. It's no. Like, it's so haram. I said, yes. Like, it's so, if you guys don't know what haram is before I continue, um, haram is like, oh, like, poor this, poor that. It's very like, um, like, ooh, you don't do it. An opening to sin. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, every day we'll do some things that are halal, which are good. Yeah. Clean, good, acceptable. Other times, <laughs> not, not as much. Not so much. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, one of my cousins just... Three or four years ago, it, I mean, within the last, like, decade, had an arranged marriage. Oh, yeah. Here. In yeah. the U.S. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we bring our tradition with us. I don't agree with everything. Right. But it's still there. Yeah. It, j- just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean it's not right. there. And, and, you know, <laughs> and we have this common theme in our podcast. Like, there's no, you know, no one's perfect. No one's... Everyone makes their own path. Everyone makes their own decisions. But, you know, in our case, this is the basis of what we were taught. Yeah. This is this is how we are. The food, the dancing, the yelling, the not yelling, the, hospita- the hospitality, the all of that. Mm-hmm. Good or bad. We were taught all these really great things. And it made and, us who we are. <laughs> yeah, it made us who we are. I mean, and, you know, kind of going back to the growing up phase, like, I loved being who I was. People didn't like me because I was who I was. And Mm -hmm. I think people saw that as maybe them being insecure. I don't know. But for me, I know that in the end of the day, I am me and no one else can be me. And you can't copy me. There's no, there's no copy of me anywhere. Yeah. There's people that are really, really similar, whether that be through culture, astrology, work Mm -hmm. life, right? But, like, I have come to this full fruition of I know who I am. Yeah. And if you're not on board, you can leave. You know what I mean? And I think once you kind of grasp on whether your culture is, you know, 
if you're, you know, super, you know, American or if you're super Middle Eastern or if you're Hispanic or if you're whatever you are. I think when you fully accept every part of you, whether it's good or bad, in your culture, in your life, in your personality, whatever, I feel like you start to feel like, wow, like, I care so much. We're waiting for everyone else to catch up. Yeah. Because you should never, unless you want to, if you don't want to accept your culture or whatever, you don't have to, but make your own way. Yeah. Yeah. Your identity speaks volumes. Of course. And how you embrace it. But also you can't change society. Correct. And you can't change, like, can you change your bloodline now? No. No. Okay, there's no science behind that. I just wanted to make sure. I don't there, think so. Because <laughs> honestly, the science world, medical world, <laughs> is changing so quickly. Every time I think, like, oh, yeah, that doesn't exist. It exists. And I'm like, oh, we can right. do that now. <laughs> Great. Um, you know, but I, understand that it's there. If you don't want it to be there, you don't have to recognize You don't have to, like, participate, but you have to recognize it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's things in, the in like, my culture that I'm like, oh, yeah, that's so me. And then other things I'm like, haha, what? Yeah, like, no. no way. Get as far away from it as possible, yeah. Right. Yeah. But we also, we grew up in a really weird time. Because we grew up in a post-9-11 world. 9-11 world. We lived in the 9-11 yeah, We did, world. yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, walking down the street with my hijabi family scary it's crazy people are scared of you speaking arabic at the grocery store at the market yeah don't get me started you know it's well my my mom at one point just said don't even don't even speak arabic in front of like other people yeah and i'm like huh why not but i you know because i didn't get it because i'm still a kid yeah well and I, i mean i know from my experiences with other gay men we do that when we're out, I mean, you don't wear exactly what you want to wear because you're worried you're going to get pointed out depending on where you're going. Yeah. If you're going to a sports bar, a sports bar, why would you wear the super bright colors and short shorts and all of that if you don't want to be looked at? I don't like being looked at. I will wear very plain things until I'm going out to a gay bar. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> We adjust to fit our circumstances in society, and we just need to survive. (laughs) Yeah. We need to survive. It's so true. And again, that's like kind of going back to this sense of like conforming when you need to and not when you shouldn't. Yeah. Like, and you know, if that makes you feel safe to do so, and like if you do go to a sports bar or something and you feel safer conforming at that point. Yeah. You got to do what is best for you, but also remember yourself. Like, I will never, like, I'll go out, I'll look cute, whatever. And, but I will always be who I am, whether I'm in those clothes or other clothes. If I'm in my pajamas versus my going out clothes, I want to remember that I'm still me. Exactly. So you just never want to forget that, you know, going forward. Yeah. And it's a very generalized statement to say that. Yeah. You know, they're great bars everywhere whatever just to make everyone happy but (laughs) just just to make everyone feel better you know we we have to carry ourselves wherever we go and whatever we do and somehow you and i have found it a way to do that with grace yes and dignity and satisfaction internally and we make it work Some people are still learning, and it is a very individualized experience where we could sit on here for three hours and say, do this. If this doesn't work, do this. If this works, move on to this next step. If that second step doesn't work, go back to the first one and try again, and if that doesn't work, go to this next. It could go on for hours, but it's really about knowing who you are, being comfortable with that, and being able to carry that with you in everything you do. Yeah, and doing the best that you can. Because yeah. there's going to be situations where you're not going to feel like 130% in every situation. Yeah. But if you're doing what you can and what you know is best and you're not hurting anyone else, you just got to do what you got to do. Go with the flow. 
And don't drag anyone under. <laughs> Tyler fully pulls me under the bus. I get I, run yeah, over. Yeah. I am <laughs> Regina George. Mean girls. We love her. But yeah, no, just always be yourselves and just know that you don't need to conform if you don't want to. Yeah. But also know who you are and accept it. The struggle never ends, but it does get easier. Wow, that's such a positive note. It is. It such is. a positive note. Well, on that note, we'll just start wrapping things up here. So you can find us on any of our social medias. Um, you can find me on Instagram at gsabot1234 um, or on TikTok, uh, GabbyS80. Um, you can also find the podcast on Enhance, Apple Music, and Anchor. And then if you also look up Enhance Podcast on YouTube, you can find us there as well. We have a new episode every Saturday with a bonus episode on the third Wednesday of every month. And Tyler, your social medias? Yes, I will happily give out my Instagram, <laughs> <So> which <cute. laughs> is private. Um, so feel free to give a follow request and I will let you in to see all of the... Eh, 40 pictures that I have on there uh, and you're update awesome. semi-regularly. <laughs> and my handle is tyler.h.shaw, that is T-Y-L-E-R dot H dot S-H-A-H, not a W. It is an H. <laughs> Circle them back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Tyler, thank you again so much uh, for joining us. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, but also, listeners, thank you so much for joining us this week and hope to talk to you soon. Enhance your peace, your joy, and your existence. Do 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 do